before you go to your seat, I want you to say to five people. How many? Intentionally look at them and say, be grateful. <laughs> if he's not looking at you, pull his head. Five. I said, move. I'm not seeing movement. Some people are just standing there. Move. Tell people, be grateful. Praise the Lord. Our team for the month is saying that, how grateful are you? Praise the Lord. And I'm teaching on be grateful. And I said that the most ungrateful and dangerous people in this world are ungrateful people. The most wicked and dangerous people you can live with is an ungrateful person. Ungratefulness is a sin which comes with severe consequences. Even God hates ungratefulness. Praise the Lord. The Bible says it in the book of Psalms 28 from verse 5. God, as mighty as He are, He is. He has everything. He still punish ungratefulness because they have no regard for the deeds of the Lord and what His hand has done, He will tear them down and not build them up. Many people are torn down. Many people are not going anywhere because of ungratefulness. Tell somebody be grateful. There are times you have to come to understanding that when people do you good and they come back and do you little bad, look at their good and let it go. Oh, you couldn't clap. I said this church, when one person clap, we all clap for Jesus. Gratefulness is a key. It's important. And God looks at it. And I want us to read from the book of Luke 17, from verse 11. That's where I took my scripture anchor from. It's very important for you to live a life of gratefulness. It does not matter how small somebody has helped you. You must learn how to say, I am thankful. Thank you. Thank you goes a long way to move your life forward. Praise the Lord. He said, the Bible says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Verse 2, he said, as he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Verse 14, and he said, when he saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God with a loud voice, not a small voice. Praise the Lord. Loud voice threw himself on before Jesus Christ and thanked him. And yet he was a Samaritan. In verse 17, the Bible says, and Jesus asked him, were you not ten? Where are the nine? God hates ungratefulness. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner who does not know who I am. But yet, when he found out that the eating has stopped, he decided to come back. Then he said unto them, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. And that's where I, I want to start that. Our walk with Jesus, our journey with Jesus does not only bring us to our character, to perfect our character, but also to make us to live well. Jesus Christ, by salvation, did not only make us to repent from our sins, but also to make us to live well. It brings us into transformation that will change our life for the better to make us to live well. But I came to tell someone this afternoon that if you focus on Jesus, your life will get well. You didn't shout a bigger amen. So Jesus himself put it in this way. In John 10, 10, he said, The thief cometh not, but to what? 
to steal and to kill and to destroy but I came that you may have a life to the fullest amen to have a life to the fullest that you may have an abundant life that life that word there does not mean that you are going to live 200 years no he is saying that the life he is going to give you is not a quantified life but it's a quality life that if you should live 10 years, your name will never be forgotten. You didn't shout a bigger amen. Than, your, than, than somebody who has lived 100 years. What he's saying is that you make an impact. What he's saying is that you will live a comfortable life. You are, you are living a life. But after salvation, Jesus is saying that he's going to give you the life God intended for you and I. A quality life, which is called the Zoe life. And I wrote something down. And I want everybody, if you can write it down, it will help you. That the largest contributor to the quality life you and I want is connected to your emotional well-being. It is your emotions. Praise the Lord. The largest contributor to the quality of your life is your emotional well-being. Somebody can be sitting down and be happy with their hand to their jaw and you still be happy. Somebody will be sitting down with their hand to their jaw and will not be happy. Emotions. Somebody will be crying, but yet happy. They call it tears of what? Joy. But somebody will be smiling and will be hurting within. The quality of your life is your emotional well-being. That is why some people cannot live alone. But some people can live alone. Oh, you didn't get what I just said. Amen? Am I preaching to somebody? The quality of your life is not therefore tied to how much money you have in the bank. <laughs> some people only smile when they have enough money in the bank. That's not life. Praise the Lord. The quality of your life is not connected to people that you know. Hey, I, I took picture with President Biden. How much did they give you? I sat down and I had dinner with Putin. Where do you know him? So the quality of your life is not connected to your bank account or the high people in the place that you know or it's not connected to how much you come to church. The quality of your life is tied to the condition of your heart. It's tied to the condition of your heart. So I ask you this question this afternoon. What is the condition of your heart? Do you know people come to church and they are crying? People come to church in pain. Praise the Lord. The condition of your heart is what determines the quality of your life. So Solomon put it in this way in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. He said, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. He said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are all the issues of your life. Your heart is the traffic light of your life. You ever seen a traffic light before? Every car is going, good or bad cars. They are all big ones, short ones, bicycle, motors, everything. And what we, all manner of things go through the traffic light. That is how your heart is. The issues of your life goes through your heart. Which means that anything that gets your heart gets your life. Can I put it in this way? Your heart is your life. That is why when your heart stops beating, what happened? Oh, second service, pre preach, preach with me. When your heart stops beating, what happened? 
So whatever gets to your heart, gets your attention. Whoever gets to your heart, get your appetite. Whoever gets to your heart, get your sleep. Have you ever heard somebody, I can't sleep? He said, what happened? What that boss did to me at work, the boss got to your heart. Have you ever heard some young girl saying, I got a broken heart, yet the heart is not broken? Oh, am I preaching to somebody? Whatever gets your heart, gets your focus. But I pray this afternoon, may no one in your life be able to get your heart. That your heart will be for God. Praise the Lord. The largest contributor to the quality of any person's life is the condition of their heart. So the word of God puts that description of anybody whose condition of heart brings, brings them a good life and he puts it in one word you see they describe it in one word joy there is a word that the bible uses to describe the condition of the heart of those who follow jesus and believe in jesus and live like jesus and follow the principle of jesus and those people that word is joy you couldn't shout a bigger amen. You are married, but are you joyful? You came to church, are you joyful? You have money, but are you joyful? You ever seen somebody who is saying that, if I only I can get a job, if only I can get a job, and he gets the job, and yet he has no joy. Why? Nobody gives that joy. It is only one person that can give that joy and that person his name is Jesus John 15 verse 11 sometimes we think we have joy but there is a joy that comes from Jesus he said I have told you this thing so that you will be filled with joy yes that your joy, your joy will overflow. Give me the, the King James Version. Give me the King James Version and the NIV Version, please. It is important. These things have I spoken to you that your joy may remain, that my joy may remain in you. Follow me. That my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be what? Full. So you cannot have joy to the fullest until the joy of Jesus is in you. You didn't get what I just said. My joy in you is what makes your joy complete. That's what Jesus is saying. If you get Jesus, then the joy you have will be complete. Until I put my joy in you, your joy will never be complete. That is why you can see many in church, but many are not enjoying Jesus. It is important. He said, when you get me, you get joy. If you have Jesus, when you run into Jesus, you have run into joy. Can I hear amen? amen. You can run to church and not have joy. You can run to church and not have joy. It is so crucial. It is so important. And this is where many of us, we are missing it. Because the joy of the Lord is weeded out of us. The joy of the Lord is dried out of us. But this afternoon, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray the restoration of that joy in the name of Jesus Christ. When you actually run into Jesus, you run into joy. And when that joy comes into you, you start experiencing something that is unexplainable. That joy is called joy unspeakable, full of glory. You cannot explain it. They ask you, why are you dancing? You said, I am dancing because this morning I woke up healthy. And somebody said, is that all? You don't understand. It is God who has given me life. And that is why I have joy. That joy is unexplainable. In the midst of challenges, you are still able to sing. 
And every time you give that joy, God takes the glory. When you walk, when you talk, and you express that joy, you give God the glory. Do you know something? Anybody who is joyful always express it. My prayer is that somebody will give you one million dollars this week. Only a few people believed it. So nobody could shout a bigger amen. But you'll be shocked that it's still not satisfying you. Because the economic people, the economics say that man's need is insatiable. Man always wants something. Man always wants something. So you see, you cannot have a complete satisfaction. But when you come into Christ, it may be small. It may be petite. In the eyes of people, it is nothing to hold, hold, hold in you. But you still sit there and you are so joyful. You ever seen somebody living in a studio? And when you go, he turned the whole place into a studio. He plays music. He sings. And he's so happy. And you ask yourself, in this small room, but you are living in a big room, you have everything. And yet, That joy is unexplainable. The man has no money. He goes to work and gets small money. But when you go and see them sitting at the table eating together, they have joy. But you have everything. They take you to a restaurant. They buy the best food for you. But yet still, this joy is full of glory. When that joy comes, it sets you into a place of gratitude. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every time you are joyful, God takes the glory. God looks at you and begins to say, look at my son. Look at my daughter. In the midst of economic downturn, he's still waking up to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Oh, am I preaching to somebody? That woman was standing here this morning. He said, look at me this morning. I'm healthy and whole. And today, he said, I, I could not wake up on Sunday and come to church. But look at her this morning. She has come to church. That young girl said, the, the person hit the accident. But one thing you must remember, it only hit the car. It did not hit the body. Her, her, her body. Her body is alive, healthy and whole. Let me tell you, the moment you stop breathing, you start dying. Therefore, the Bible says, let everything that has bread. I, I didn't see these people that they have bread. I think uh, some people here don't have bread. Oh, you are thinking about your rent? Okay, if they take the bread. Oh, you are thinking about the, 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 the money? If they take the bread. No, you are thinking about your husband if they take the bread. He said, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. From the scriptures we read, Choosing joy means choosing to live with gratitude. When you choose joy, you choose to live with gratitude. And being grateful is a decision you make. Being grateful is what? It's a decision. It's not an outcome. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. So it's an outcome. But you being grateful is a decision. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. So when the Spirit of the Lord is upon a man, one of the fruits is love, joy, peace, all that they are outcomes. Praise the Lord. But when it comes to the place of gratitude, it is your choice. Am I helping somebody this afternoon? It is important 
two people can receive the same thing and one will be grateful and the other will not. Praise the Lord. There are people that you can be so helpful and you will not hear from them. And I told you, ingratitude has severe consequence. I want to say it to enter your spirit. It has severe consequence. When you are ungrateful, you will soon be grounded. Many have not gone far because of ingratitude. Some of you who joined me to go to Ghana from faith wedding saw that at the wedding reception there was a man who I introduced and I've been preaching about this man and I told you that when I was coming to Ghana that is 22 years ago 22 years ago hey, I've been long here praise the Lord out of nowhere I did not ask him he was just a friend to my uncle and then my uncle told him your boy is going to the United States, finally he has gotten his visa. Praise the Lord. And then he said, oh, so, okay, take this and go and give it to him. And tell him to start his life with $500, 22 years ago. From that 22, uh, $500, 22 years ago, I used 100 to buy Garishito and all those things because when I come, you know, I don't know, I don't want to miss Ghana, so I buy fish, kenke, uh, banku, all that, and pass to them, and I had all of them. And then I gave 200 to my wife and children, and I put 200 in my pocket. This is the money I came to America with. And from that 200, when I entered and I saw that food would not be a problem, I shipped the 200 back to my wife and children. So you see, in all, I only spent $100 from that money. It was my wife and children who had the 400. I'm now remembering that. They will pay for it. Anyway. Now, the next time I stepped foot in Ghana, this was about some 14 years ago or 15 years ago from that day if I enter Ghana 10 times in a year I give him $500 non-stop one day I put the money in his hand and he started crying he said if all people can remember the good I did to them like you are. I won't be sitting like this. He said, when the money comes, it comes on time. Oh, you don't want to clap because you don't have that joy in you. Ingratitude has destroyed many people. From the scriptures we read, he said, 10 people, just look at the number, 10 people, all of them, leprosy. And you know leprosy itch, right? So it was itching them. And so they saw Jesus. They have heard about Jesus. And the Bible says from Luke chapter 17. Studio, preach with me. As they saw Jesus, from verse 11, the Bible says, they shouted at his name, Masa. Jesus, have mercy upon us. And the Bible says, look, look at what happened. The Bible says, when he, they asked that, have mercy on us, Jesus said, go and show yourself to who? To the priest. No, tell me what did they do? They only mentioned, they did nothing. Do you know that there are people who will do nothing? You will help them through everything and they will never remember you. Hey, if you brought me to America and so what? Hey! Hey! Don't kill and destroy your destiny. 
The young man who gave me somebody's paper to work by name Kofi Frimpong. The paper I was using, the name was Kofi Frimpong. So I'll be standing at a job and they are calling, Frimpong, Frimpong. It's not my name. How do you respond to something that is not yours? And then they said, they are calling you. I said, hey, 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 hey. I've now remembered. I'm a duplicate. I am still helping him today. You forget people. Some of us, it is not prayer you need. It is gratitude. Some of us, it is not prayer. You're a young boy. You came to have, they brought you from your village to America. Your mother has watched over you and you have graduated. And today, you say your mother is not your type. Ah! Let me tell you something. Even if somebody told you that your mother is a witch, accept that you are a child of a witch. Help that witch because that witch did not eat you up. That witch has made you who and where you are. Somebody said, be grateful. Be grateful. So, these 10 people, they come to Jesus and Jesus said, go and show yourself. They did no input. No input. That is the ingratified life of people that they do nothing. Some of you, your parents held your hand, did everything for you. You are calling them names today. He could be your brother. Did everything. And you are calling them names today. And I told you, ingratitude comes with severe consequence. Can you imagine a pastor? You are sitting down. You only preach. You only prayed. And you are not the one who will answer the prayer. You, 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 the prayer you prayed, the words you use, you, you copied it from the Bible. So where is your input? Is it your shouting? And then after God will perform the miracle, somebody will now take a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and say, thank you. Instead of you to say, Father, thank you. You make yourself, you see, you see yeah, I'm the one who did the prayer. You did what? If you can pray, why don't you pray for yourself and solve your problem? Ingratitude. God says, I will share my glory with no man. But sometimes we make a mistake and think that, oh, it is God who did it. It's true. Oh, very true. But let me tell you, have you ever seen God? You ever met God on your journey? Has God visited you in your room and given you a car key? Has God given you a, a green card before? Has God physically delivered a husband to you before? God through someone. Yes, God through someone. Yes, so that that person God used is your God. And you must appreciate that person and say thank you. And the Bible says, as they obeyed. He said, go and show yourself to them. They, it did not, the healing did not even come. As he said, as they were going, they saw that the itching has stopped. As they were going. And the Bible says, one of them, who was not a member of Redeemer Church of Christ, said, you know what? The itching has stopped. Let me go back because I know the source. When your joy is genuine, when your joy is lasting, it's because you know the authenticity of it. You know the source of it. 
So here is it. He comes back. So you see, I told you there are severe consequences. There are people, as soon as you help them and they get to a point, they feel that they don't need you anymore. They start looking down upon you. When they are itching, stop. They forget the God who made the itching to stop. And so they don't go back to say thank you. I had a very humbling story of a young man in this church who gave me $20. And the way he packaged the $20 in an envelope. So when the envelope was given to me, I thought it was $1 million. But when I opened it, I said, thank you, Jesus. It was $20. And I started shouting, thank you, Jesus. I looked for his number and I called him. He didn't pick up. I called him again. And then he said, Pastor Kobe, is it $20 that you are just trying to thank me? And I said, you don't understand. Go and check. From all that I know, it was $20 that the, the young man called George Floyd went to Philadelphia and took a fake $20 to a store. And that is how he met his debt. So if you like, go and steal $20 in this country. They will kill you for free. But that you, you brought me $20. I had no effort. I played no role. I am grateful. I am thankful. It does not matter how small it is. It is the heart behind. You may not need it, but you must learn to be appreciative. Be grateful. He said, well, they not turn. And I... I wrap up my message. Listen. This church is eight years this month. It is not my preaching. <laughs> People can preach all. Oh. Ha. And when I mean, we need a mover. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shout hallelujah if it's your voice. No, 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 no. People can preach. It's not my eloquence. No. People are dangerously learned. I'm just coming. So it has nothing to do with my preaching. It is not the spirit of the Lord that is upon me. There are people who can do mighty greater things. But you know what? My own cousin, my first cousin called me three days ago or so. And he was asking me. We were talking and I said, bro, I'm busy. The church is eight years old. And he said, wait, wait, wait. What did you say? I said, the church is eight years old. He said, you mean the church that you are pastoring is eight years old. I say, yeah, it's eight years. He said, with all those people there, you mean in eight years? No, he said, I've been in a church for 25 years. They don't even have 200 members. And you are talking of a, this number of people. And I said, if the Lord is with you, he will do the unexplainable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, we come this month Sometimes we wait till 29th and then we start celebrating. We have started the celebration because if you know that it is God who is at work in this church, then we will start celebrating him in this man that he gave birth to redeem the church of Christ. Because he said, let everything that has bread. So as this church is breathing, we must all give him glory and be thankful for the things that he has done in the church. I was privileged to visit the church to minister in Ghana. And when I went with this man of God who was sitting there, and then as he was introducing me, he was saying, oh, this is the largest African church in Maryland. I said, why are you selling me like that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he looked at me, he said, I know you don't like that, but that is the truth. Men and brethren, has God been good to us? Yes. We may have challenges. We have issues. But we can see the hand of God. The church we went in 
has been there for 30 years. And they, in, Ghana, in Africa, they could not count 200 people. Look at our second service. You haven't seen anything yet. But what will keep this going? Watch it. Every morning, our first prayer is, thank you. Go and check the records. Every morning, first prayer. Thank you. Every time, first prayer. Thank you. We look for something he has done. And something he is doing because God is always doing something. Praise the Lord. God is always what? I came this morning I thought the choir people did not wear their dress. Not knowing they have stylish it. I was so angry in my spirit. I said, how do they style their own? And they did not style my own. My own is like a prisoner. But I thank God I have one to wear. You see, I lost you. You see, I thank God I have one to wear. Praise the Lord. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Do you know something? The Bible makes me to understand that the work of Jesus here was for you and I. And he came to give us a will. And that will is that you and I, when we get a revelation, then we will have a jubilation. Because you cannot jubilate until you get a revelation. Some of us, we don't understand that Christ has finished the work already. And all we have to do is to walk into that rest. And one of it is to have a joy. And when joy is in place, gratitude will surely follow. And when gratitude is following, praise, 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 praise. I was pitying the man in the I was pitying him in the, in the first service. You know why? Those who came for the first service will tell, they will tell you. All the noise we were doing, he was still standing there like that. You know why? When you don't have a revelation, you cannot have a jubilation. Because you don't understand why I am dancing. And you don't understand that if it had not been the Lord on my side, you will not know that some of us, nobody will have known our last name if not for Jesus. Oh my goodness, am I preaching to somebody? Some of us, nobody will have heard about us if it had not been the, with Jesus. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house. If Jesus has not built us up, some of us we will not be happy here. If Jesus has not guided us, some of us we will not have been here. It is the presence of God that has kept us and has brought us this far. Some of us, if we were still in our country, we would never have been able to build a house. But for Jesus, but for Jesus, but for Jesus, but for Jesus. That is why David said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From there cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He will make me to lie down in green pastures. He said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He says, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my fortress. He is my refuge. Shout. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 
We know it. I know it. I know it. I was left in the village. I took Pastor Imprim there. I said, this is where I was born. I was left there. All the family, brothers and sisters. I was the only one left there. I know it. If God has not picked me. Some of you, if God has not picked you. I know it. One day, I was almost dead. And they couldn't find what was wrong with me. Four, five brother, boys, we went to eat it from a shrine. And then all the four boys died continuously, day after day. But this boy is still alive. You think it was my effort? You think it was me? Some of you, you have a story. You know very well that this can only be God. But your problem is that, you see, the itching has stopped. So you have forgotten when you were itching. God, oh my goodness. Do you know something? You can stay on that one thing that God did. Can I say something to you? If God does not do anything for this church, He has done enough. Yes, sir. Eight years, this, can a man do it? No. It is a Guinness book of record that has not been recorded. That we are the first to start a church for the first time with over 1,125 people in attendance. I can only stay there and I will not say anything. That God, you did this one, then I have no problem to worry about the rest. You see that number? 10,000, they are coming. 10,000, they are coming. 10,000, they are coming. I said 10,000. Amazing God. Amazing God. You always come to for me. Amazing. Amazing. Gratitude to the eating that gives power to what the healing. If you read further, he said he threw himself down and he started shouting, Oluwaisha! You don't know how to do it. There are times you just have to lie down. Yes, sir. You are thinking of your dress. When you die, then you will see how useless your dress is. But when it comes to this God, forget about everything. He threw himself and fell the face of Jesus. And he shouted. Thank you. And the thank you was not just thank you. A woman was telling me a story. She bought a car for her daughter, paid $43,000, and all she got from text message was, thank you. 
hair. I say, if you grew up from where I grew up from, and they buy you a car that is costing $43,000 without your input. When that person coughs, I will say, what do you say? What do you need? Should I bring you water? But ingratitude has stopped the progress of many. Let me tell you, the will of God is for you to move forward. But ingratitude can stop it. Your husband brought you into this country when you did not know left from right. When you see green light, you say it's yellow. You cannot interpret anything. Today you have gone to nursing school and you have graduated and you have RN with BC or all manner around it, all the degrees and you say, eh, when he talk, I will talk back to him. Hey! Hey! Our elder said, don't bite the hand that once fed you. Don't do it. Our, our elders here, they are not my biological parents. But whatever they tell me, I listen to it. Some of you, you need to go back to certain people and say, you know what? I have not been thankful enough. You know what your husband has done for you. That one mistake that she, he did. Oh, I had a story when I went to Ghana. There was a man who was living with his family. So good family. They, they, they were living together, having fun. Everything was going well. And then one day, the man went and did a sit You know what I call sit and he was caught. The matter was so bad that the man was jailed. So it brought shame. It brought me because these were honorable family, and it brought shame to the family. They were they were devastated. And he had to go to jail for three years. Now they gave him a light punishment. And then as he went inside the jail, he, he was so down. He, he, he felt so dejected. He had, the shame he has brought to his family and all that. And then he, 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 he was all the time trying to reach out to the family and he couldn't. And one day, he wrote a letter to be given to his wife and he said, I just want to, I, just, I know I have sinned against you. I've done so wrong against you. But I, I want to say this to you. That on the day of my release, on my third year, will you forgive me? Obviously, the woman is not going to re reply the letter, but in his letter he wrote, if you will forgive me, when I'm released and I'm coming, I will be on a bus coming to you. And the bus will run through, run right in front of their house. If you really will forgive me, just put a yellow ribbon on one of the trees there to show me that you want to welcome me back home. So three years came by. He was released. And as he was coming, his heart was beating. His heart was panting. What will my wife do? What will my wife do? And as the bus was turning into their house lane, he lifted his eye, thinking, where will I see the yellow ribbon? He was looking. He could not find the yellow ribbon. Oh, my wife don't want me. Before he could say, hey, Jack, he saw a big tree, all full of ribbons. And then he told the driver, stop. And he jumped out. And here was his family coming. And receiving him. Listen to me. Many of us we think that Jesus has for, for, forgotten us. There is a big yellow ribbon. Waiting for all of us. To come back home.
you need to go back and in your prayer stop asking for things sometimes you hear me Lord we are not asking for anything we are thanking you for everything we are not asking for anything we are thanking you for everything we are thanking you for everything because he said in everything and some people when they eat yesterday they are like chicken they wipe their mouth I have not eaten I have not eaten I have not eaten see but as for us as a church Look at us. Eight years. Working to build 30 million dollar edifice. And people who are 30 years cannot build an 8 million dollar edifice. When you go home, you check the mathematics. Eight years. And we are building what? 30 million. And some people are 30 years and they cannot build 8 million. What do you want us to do? That's why all throughout we'll be wearing jeans. My wife was telling me this morning, he said, are you trying to swag? I said, yeah.